you. Trina. Because I'm trying to tell Trina. you guys the truth. Candace. The absolute truth about you. what is happening in black America. You are being used, abused, and lied to and manipulated emotionally by the Democrat Party. That is what I am here to tell you. And, you want to keep uprising and talking about racism Candace. when they're taking our fathers out of the home? In the world of celebrity culture and political discourse, few voices resonate as powerfully as that of Candace Owens. Known for her unapologetic perspectives and fearless commentary, Owens has once again ignited controversy by turning her attention to entertainment mogul P. In her latest expose, Owens delves into the silence surrounding P. Oh my gosh, where do we begin? All right, well, he's changed his name many times over the years. You might know him as Sean Combs, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Puff, P. Diddy, or just Diddy, the D, the I, the D, the D, the Y. Okay, well, there have always been rumors, and quite frankly, I always thought that they were conspiracies because they sounded crazy. First and foremost, rumors that he was gay. Also rumors that he was behind the killing of his quote unquote best friend, the notorious B.I.G., and also that he had something to do with the killing of Tupac. Well, last year, things got interesting because Combs's ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie rom romantically when him and Cassie split up. I mean, again, all of this sounds insane, if it's true. Well, Kid Cudi thought the accusations were true. He said, yes, that is factually what happened. But of course, Diddy denied those allegations. And he instead came out and said that Cassie was simply trying to blackmail him for $30 million. And by the way, that is plausible, right? We've seen tons of those instances, especially in the era of Me Too. But this one felt a little different because we're like, okay, but she's known you for a very long time. And these allegations are quite weird but we never got a follow up there because then he very quickly settled with her for an undisclosed amount. And then even more women started coming out saying they were victims of Diddy and then it seemed like an avalanche and he issued a very strong statement condemning them for essentially extortion attempts and trying to murky his name. So again, you don't know what's real, you don't know what's not until this recent lawsuit and this one's different guys. A man named Rodney Jones has come forward to sue Diddy and this is not your average lawsuit. I will say right now, many lawsuits are in fact frivolous. I have fought and won frivolous lawsuits. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer. And he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney, also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're gonna get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70-page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York, and he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, that Diddy repeatedly groped him, touching his, I'm sorry to say this guys, his anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him explicit videos of others in Hollywood. Yes, they have named other artists claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. It's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower and is alleging that he told, he went forward and told Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Karam, about this. And Christina came back to him and said, well, you know, Sean will just be Sean. As she breaks her silence, Owens promises to unravel the complexities surrounding one of the music industry's most iconic figures. With Diddy's lawsuit taking an unexpected twist, Candace Owens has emerged with bombshell revelations. She asserts a startling connection between Diddy's legal woes and the tragic death of Michael Jackson, a claim sparking both curiosity and skepticism. Despite initial incredulity, Owens remains resolute in her assertion, poised to unveil the intricate threads binding these seemingly disparate events. Not just now the Diddy lawsuit, it's not just now Michael Jackson, we also have seen these claims uh, with 
Kanye West, notoriously, obviously, when he tweeted out, I'm about to go DEFCON 3 on some Jews. And the media freaked out and people in the Jewish community were understandably very scared, not knowing what he meant. And I very much abstained from speaking much about the issue because people were so emotional that people couldn't hear, even if I had shared. And even when Kanye did share that he was speaking about specific specific people in Hollywood that he believed were coming after him and were trying to control him. He actually named some of those individuals. He shared personal text messages uh, of a friend of his, a personal trainer to the stars, who again happens to be Jewish, who was threatening to put him in the hospital and to drug him against his will. Harley Pasternak is his name, and the media barely reported on those text messages that he shared publicly because obviously he was enemy number one. And here's what else I will tell you. When that Kanye situation went down, I was being threatened by a person named Rabbi Shmuley, a person that Michael Jackson put on his enemy list, a person that I had never heard of, was threatening me and saying that unless I came out and said things explicitly against Kanye, he would effectively ruin my life. He said that he would take out a front page ad and smear me as an anti-Semite. And it wasn't just him, it was also his daughter who were messaging me saying, don't mess with Jews. Very bizarre stuff and they have not stopped, to be clear. And him and his daughter have consistently pulled clips from this show, taken them out of context and tried to convince Jewish people that I hate them. Candace Owens is Candace Owens, the outspoken conservative pundit, has stirred considerable controversy with her latest remarks on her podcast. She boldly asserted a link between Diddy's current legal battle and the untimely death of pop icon Michael Jackson. Owens delved into the complexities of Diddy's legal entanglements, highlighting what she perceives as a glaring absence of media scrutiny. With conviction, Owens suggests a meaningful connection between Diddy's legal woes and the mysterious circumstances surrounding Jackson's tragic demise. The second big explosive thing that came from this document are the allegations that Diddy hosts freak-offs, essentially sexual events to procure blackmail on other people in the industry. They all come and they have these drug-fused parties with underage boys, with underage girls. And throughout this lawsuit, he names multiple current rappers that have been involved in these parties and are therefore existing under blackmail, right? So if you if you can suddenly record somebody and they're hooking up with a person that is underage, if you're doing drugs and Diddy has cameras on it, well then Diddy owns you. Which leads me to think, what even is gangster rap? It's a question that I have been asking a lot. It, it seems to me that there is something intentional, that they are intentionally feeding us filth via the media. And I wonder if a lot of these artists are existing within this blackmail ring. And also, where have we heard this before? Oh, yes, of course, Jeffrey Epstein, who was bizarrely protected. He was clearly an asset of not just the CIA, but also potentially the Mossad, very much involved with the Mossad over in Israel. And he, too, had so much access, so much wealth, and he got away with it for years, procuring what very clearly is blackmail on politicians. So what we are recognizing is that this ring also exists within Hollywood. Explosive allegation number three was that there's even a Ghislaine Maxwell, so to speak, a, a madame. And that is the other woman that is listed in this lawsuit. His chief of staff, Christina Karam. I don't know how journalists aren't interested in figuring out who this woman is. Her job as alleged in this lawsuit was to keep Diddy high. I'm going to tell you what this lawsuit says explicitly about her. According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Diddy, he witnessed defendant Karam openly order her assistants to keep Mr. Combs high off of gummies and pills. Defendant Karam required all employees from the butler, the chef to the housekeepers to walk around with a pouch or a fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, marijuana gummies, and Tukey, I don't know if I'm saying that right, that's a pink drug that is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. It was important to the defendant Karam to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately ready whenever he asked for it. She also ordered, allegedly, sex workers and prostitutes for Mr. Combs. 
and would order the distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms to Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht and in his homes throughout LA, New York City, and Miami. And he alleges that he was also forced to keep that drug in a pouch on him at all times against his will. Again, this is explosive. He even lists everybody in the ring. He says that it is his Diddy's son, Justin, that solicits the prostitutes and the underage girls and the sex workers, allegedly, for these freak-offs. He also lists Stevie J, uh, who recruits the sex workers and attends and participates in the freak-offs. And another young man named Brendan Paul, who works as Mr. Combs' mule. He acquires and distributes all of the drugs and the guns. Again, we won't have time to go through everything in this document, but I encourage you guys to read it because it is stunning. And yes, Christina Karam apparently even instructs them to to mix those drugs into the liquor when these women are invited over. So why is the media not interested in this story? Well, here is explosive allegation number four coming from this lawsuit. That the person who sits at the top of this ring potentially is Sir Lucian Grange. He is the CEO of Universal Music Group. He is also being sued. He has also been named as well as Universal Music Group. And he is, as a fact, one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. He runs, again, Universal Music Group, which is huge. Rodney, the producer, is alleging that when Lucian would visit Diddy's house, the two of them would go into Diddy's bedroom and be locked up in there for hours. What what does that mean? What are we supposed to think of that? By the way, I looked into Lucien, obviously, because I was fascinated by this document, and I find it really bizarre that he completely changed his name. He used to be Michael G., the son of Cecil G., who was a huge tailor in London. I found that in this old article, The Guardian, the headline is, Forgotten and Overlooked, How Jewish Designers Dressed the Beatles and Changed Global Fashion. And in it, in this article, there's a picture of Lucien. He was then, again, Michael G. He's sitting with his father, Cecil G. And it's just bizarre that also his father changed his name. In the article, it tells you that His father used to be Sasha Goldstein. So Sasha Goldstein became Cecil G, who gave birth to Michael G, who is now Lucien Grange. I mean, totally bizarre rabbit hole if you guys want to look into it. I just thought it was weird. I did a cursory search and found all of that. Uh, Perhaps most crucial, though, in the lawsuit is that unbeknownst to Lucien, Diddy also has a ton of hidden cameras all throughout his house, including in his bedroom which would perhaps suggest that the blackmail runs both ways. Maybe he also has blackmail on Lucien Grange. Again, I don't know. I'm just telling you what's in this lawsuit and what we can derive from it if these allegations are true. And again, the fact that there are so many photos in this document at least proves that he does have evidence of some sort. Despite their monumental achievements, Michael Jackson's life was marred by serious allegations. He faced a controversial situation marked by an official arrest warrant for his alleged inappropriate conduct with children. As Michael Jackson confronted the weighty allegations and surrendered himself to authorities mere weeks later, his legal predicament reached a critical juncture. Amidst grappling with serious accusations, he found himself at a nadir in his life. Conservative commentator Candace Owens recently challenged Sean Diddy Combs to name names of those involved in an alleged abuse ring in Hollywood. This call to action came after Diddy issued an apology for a 2016 video that surfaced showing him violently attacking his then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura. Owens weighed in on the matter by writing on X, formerly Twitter, that it was great to hear you're sorry, Diddy. I'd be willing to sweep a lot under the rug if you did the first courageous thing in your life and named exactly who was operating the ring in Hollywood. She added in a follow-up post on Sunday, name names. Recently, CNN released surveillance footage from March 2016 that shows Sean Diddy Combs physically assaulting Cassie Ventura in the hallway of a Los Angeles hotel. In November 2023, Ventura filed a lawsuit against Combs, accusing him of rape and years of repeated physical and other abuse. The lawsuit was swiftly settled between both parties after initially denying any wrongdoing. When singer Cassie Ventura filed her lawsuit, hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs broke his silence regarding the footage, which shows him dragging and kicking his then-partner after throwing her to the ground. Ventura met Combs when she was 19 and he was 37. They began dating about two years later and broke up in 2018. In a video posted to Instagram, Diddy admitted he was f up and had hit rock bottom at the time of the reported assault. 
He acknowledged that his behavior in that video is inexcusable and stated that he takes full responsibility for his actions. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now, Combs said, adding that he has gotten professional help. I'm committed to being a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. Homeland Security Investigations HSI New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available. So, Candace, we can, Candace, hold we on, can, wait, 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 wait. We can be emotional, so, Candace, we can wait, wait, boo, no, 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 you can no, cheer, on, but I'm telling on, you right on. now, the black Candace, vote is not gonna matter so my, after the next about Ka five years if you Katrina, don't start paying attention Katrina, to what I'm saying to you. Katrina, because I'm trying to tell Katrina, you guys the truth. Candace, the absolute truth about you. what is happening in black America. You are being used, abused, and lied to and manipulated emotionally by the Democrat Party. That is what I am here to tell you. And, you want to keep uprising and talking about racism Candace. when they're taking our fathers out of the home, when they're you making said welfare. That already. No, no, no. We but got you. Because so we're seeing on, it happen man. right here. Right here. I'm telling you it. And you're being responsive you. because I, I can't finish a sentence so, about Katrina, what I'm going to say Katrina, about slavery. Disagree. Katrina. Everyone in totality you. You saw disagrees. It was so bullshit. Oh, and that's, you that's did. culture, man. That's not intellectual. That's culture. I need you to come in. I need